Okay, so this video sequence has now been um, rendered out. In the previous video we looked at changing the scale of this video sequence under the effects controls. Um, and we also looked at rendering out our, our work area. Now for the purposes of this video tutorial just now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to um, use the razor tool on my toolbar to slice and cut up this video sequence just so it's not as long. Anytime I start doing anything or adding to it, it's going to ask me to continually kind of render it out. So to save a bit of time, and also so that you know how to use this technique, what I'm going to do is use the razor tool. Now this time scrubber that we have that you'll notice up here in the effects control as well as in my timeline is going to be extremely handy, particularly for getting a particular uh, point, a specific point on the, the video sequence timeline. And remember that we can view that through um, you know, exact frames if we require. Um, but also when we start working with keyframes and animation that's going to be useful. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use this um, the time scrubber here to indicate where I intend to cut the video sequence. If I grab my razor tool on my toolbar and just click on that red line, it now splits the video sequence into two. Let me just collapse this for you so you can see that. And I can it's indicated by the fact that the name is at the beginning of each of the blocks. And if I select that for each of these, I can see that they're now separate entities and they can be moved or translated however I wish. So for the purposes of this tutorial, what I'm going to do is just delete this. And now I've got the two sequences like so. Okay, this bar up at the top of the timeline here indicates the start and the end of our sequence and this can be manipulated if perhaps you only want to render out a particular part of a video sequence. Um, so that can be edited from start to finish. Okay, and that will save you, so for example if we were going to sequence we can look at rendering particular uh, looking at rendering out a specified um, area and that's going to be relative to this here. Okay. And um, similarly if you want to export your media when we come to actually exporting the video file, this will be relative to the start and end point of the actual timeline. So just take that into consideration. Sometimes you might hit the render key and you'll notice that your bar is sitting about here and for some reason it's only rendering out so much of the video sequence and that is because of this um, slider here. It should automatically adjust each time we add in media, but just keep a wee eye on that. So now that I have um, trimmed that video sequence, what I'm going to do is just grab it. I'm going to move it down onto the same layer, same video layer um, as the Comp1 AVI. And what we're going to look at doing is trying to create a transition between the two of these video clips because at the moment they just kind of cut into each other. Okay. Um, in order to be able to do this, if I go to my effects, I have um, a range of um, audio effects, audio transitions, video effects, video transitions, and what we're going to have a look at is a video transition. So um, let's have a look at a, a page peel. Um, Okay, so I'll grab this center page peel and what I'm going to do is just drop it down and it's in between these two um, video sequences. Don't worry too much about this um, dialog box, um, ins insufficient media transition will contain repeated frames. That's just saying basically it's over a short period of time. So what we could do is we could look at expanding that, um, which is what we're going to have a look at doing anyway um, to make it suit. So if I hit OK, um, and let's just grab and move over and see what happens. Okay, so there is the transition as it stands between these two video clips. Now, if I click on it itself, under my effects control, it brings up our panels here, which is where we can go about editing it. And this gives us an indication of my comp video and the nursery video, and it's looking at um, creating this page peel effect over this duration. And if I decrease this, you see that the duration is changing, so the amount of video now has been eaten up with both of these has been eaten into and affected. We can also adjust the kind of the start point okay, um, between A and B, A being the 
the top video and B being the, the second video. So there's an example of just a kind of a retransition effect and what you'll notice is we read um dot has appeared on the timeline which is expecting you now to render out this work area. The difference here would be looking at instead of render entire work area we'd just be looking at render effects in work area which is going to be a lot less frames and you'll notice it should go a lot quicker. Again, something you want to keep on top of when you're previewing and working with your video sequence to make sure that it looks um, how you want it. Okay, so there's a funky page peel. So, um, next thing we're going to have a wee look at is looking at um, animation. Now, animation can be achieved over a number of different properties related to video sequences. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this first video sequence um, and we're going to come up here to opacity. Now at the moment opacity is at 100% uh, which means it can fully see the video sequence. If I drop that right down to zero what's going to happen is it's going to take away the video sequence now. Before I do that I'm just going to explain this toggle animation um, kind of radio button that's or sorry toggle animation button that has been pressed at the moment um, to show that it's active. What this is going to do is anytime I change the values of the slider it's going to produce a keyframe. Now the keyframe is key or integral to creating any kind of form of animation. The keyframe indicates and records any adjustment to the properties of any given um, asset or media at um, a particular point on the timeline. So I'll give you an example. If I reduce this down to 0%, you'll notice that this kind of wee rhombus has appeared on the timeline. And this is a keyframe. And what that's saying is that I've recorded, or the, the program rather, has recorded the information of this video sequence being at 0% opacity at this particular point. Now what I'm going to try and replicate is a kind of fade-in effect where the video sequence goes from black to start to play the video. So if I just grab my timeline and move it along like so, keeping an eye on how long, so say it's taking one second for it to fade in, and I just start grabbing this slider and filling it all the way back up again, you'll notice again a keyframe has now been um, put in place. So I have a start and an end point, and that's what these keyframes are, and you'll notice that when I hover over them, I can see the values changing. So let's just play the video sequence now and we'll see how this looks. Okay, so there's a short, quite a quick burst, but nevertheless we have now animated the opacity levels of this video sequence. If I wish to make it slightly longer, I can grab the keyframe and I could move it along and that's going to allow me to view the fade over a longer period of time. Now say I wanted to change the values perhaps, um, I can select the keyframe and what I need to make sure that I have is my timeline um, or this time scrubber right on top of the keyframe otherwise when I change the values what's going to happen and I'll give you an example here if I have moved this just off a wee bit and change the values another keyframe has now popped in place here if I zoom right in, you can see it right there. Now if I select that, I can just hit delete, which is no problem. Just going to zoom back out again. If I make sure I'm bang on top of it, and I can check this really because I know that my percentage was at 100%, I can select this and I could reduce it down, and that's going to change the values and properties of that keyframe. Now as that is changed to now 52%, what's going to happen is for the rest of the animation, or the video sequence is going to remain at 52% until I create another keyframe and tell it otherwise. And what's going to happen is there's now going to be a gradual change between here and here. Okay, so that's what um, it's keyframe animation for you. I'm just going to delete those and bring that back to being just a simple fade in effect. Now these transitions actually are available, or sorry, video effects are available in the presets. However, it's a good example to show you um, how to go about using keyframes. And these can also be used 
for the um, purposes of moving um, images and actually creating animation which is something that we'll have a look at in another video sequence and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the nursery video and I'm just going to go towards the end and I'm going to repeat the same process but I'm going to do the opposite way around so I'm going to go to the end of the sequence here um, and I'm going to go to the opacity again and I'm going to reduce it right down to 0% and if I bring my slider in a wee bit and bring it back up to 100% I now have this keyframe. The keyframe, the end keyframe is right in the very edge there. You can just see it. Um, but it should fade out for me. Um, if I just play the animation, the video. A wee bit glitchy because it's requiring to be rendered. Um, one thing to have a wee look at is if we go back down here, because this video sequence has been expanded, you'll notice this yellow line and we can see the keyframes here and we can see this dip. Now keyframes can be grabbed and edited and moved here and you'll notice that that's just affected the timeline here. I'll move this down here. So I move out the screen just because we've zoomed in so far. If I move it here we can see it directly affecting here. We can also um, Sorry, I'm just undoing that. I'm just jumping between keyframes and keyframes. We can also expand this setting here and we can view again almost like a graph. We can see um, the kind of transition between this keyframe and that keyframe. Okay, so that's some, there's some examples rather of using transitions um, and also being able to create some kind of form of animation. Um, what we'll look at in the next video is continuing this kind of effect creating kind of um, keyframes um, and we'll also look at embedding some audio into the, the video sequence now as well.